Hello everyone, and as always, welcome to another scintillating episode of Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we jump right back into Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. We are on turn 2, and we are in the North. Army Group North has advanced. The infantry has advanced. Anyway, uh, we still have to move 4th Panzer Group, that's right up here in the neon pink. Uh, we've moved 16th Army, you see here. They've made very nice progress. They're heading to the two bridgeheads that we'll want to take. Uh, we may not take them quite this far east. Uh, 18th Army, meanwhile, has moved beyond Riga. Uh, very good progress from the 18th Army. And they continue to move north here. As you can see, we've got Soviet units that are in full retreat up in Estonia. And we will be moving 18th Army here to the west of Lake Pipas and Lake Peskov. And up and around the north side of those twin lakes towards the ultimate prize of Leningrad. And what we plan to do is take this infantry this way the 16th from down here up this way and we'll meet somewhere here in the middle near leningrad now because we've been talking game mechanics a lot this time i haven't talked as much about strategy and you know the game playing the game itself now we have a big decision to make this time and that's with fourth panzer and we see some of fourth panzer here some of fourth panzer is also up here and helped us take riga last turn or, yeah, last turn. Um, hello, David J. Russon. How are you? Spiral Megatron. Good old Megatron. I like it. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, just got War in the East 2. I think you're going to love it. If you love the original game, I think you'll definitely love this. There are some differences but it still feels like a you know your comfortable old sweater that you put back on. It's got enough of the same ideas and gameplay that it'll feel uh, vaguely familiar with a few new twists. And uh, hopefully we can make those a little more uh, decipherable as we go along here. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for stopping by. Lots of new faces, and I love it. Rus uh, Russ... Son, Russ Son. Well, I've been David. I've been saying Russon as if you were French for uh, well weeks now. Weeks. I'll get it right eventually. Uh, I think that everybody here at the channel knows that uh, you know sometimes linguistics isn't uh, the drawing card here. Uh, <laughs> we uh, sometimes you know the pronunciations uh, can can go astray. Uh, anyway, so let's talk a little bit of strategy before we move 4th Panzer. What are we trying to do with 4th Panzer? Well, unlike in the other theaters where really it is all about advance uh, with your Panzers, with 4th you've got a little different sort of problem. One is up here in the north you've got really bad terrain, okay? And also, Army Group North reaches its objective before the other theaters will reach their objective. Leningrad is just closer uh, than Moscow or Rostov. And so we're going to get up to a heavily urban area sooner. And that is not where you want to operate your panzers. You want to avoid bad terrain and urban areas. Uh, well, that's what you've got up here, essentially. And so what do you do with these panzers, which you know I treat like light cavalry? Uh, in a pre-World War II game or a pre-World War I game, uh, a Napoleonic or American Civil War game, how you treat your light cavalry where you're trying to envelop and encircle with them. Uh, their great strength, of course, they're amazing fighting units as well, as we'll see eventually, but their real strength is in their mobility. And so what we're trying to do with them is encircle and entrap as many Soviet troops as we can. Well, in the north, that's you know, after the initial encirclement, there's not as much of that available. So what do you do with them? Well, I usually use them to carve a path up to Peskov. All right, so we still, we got to cross Riga. That's objective one. Peskov is objective two. Novgorod is three, and then Leningrad. 
And so that's kind of how we're going to move our Panzers and try to avoid big pitched battles with them. We don't want to be losing tanks taking on infantry in bad terrain. Um, hey, Jasic, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. You're becoming a regular, Jasic, and I like it. I like it. Um, and so we're going to be using them to kind of carve out this territory and avoid big pitched battles. We don't want to get in a situation where a panzer division, for instance, is attacking three stacked infantry units in heavy woods, like we would see here, or is stuck in the marsh here fighting uh, infantry in woods or heavy woods. We've got to try to avoid that. So as we get up here, we'll have them lead the way kind of through this area so we avoid the marsh or maybe even out this way. We get them to here, and then we turn it over to the infantry. Then we'll take the panzers, and you can do sort of one of two things with them. You can move them up here to the northeast and try to cut off any sorts of resupply efforts across Lake Ladoga, or you can take them directly east here just north of this mountainous, rough, woodsy terrain and try to come down and even assist in the taking of Moscow. Uh, and so those are decisions for a future date. For now, let's just kind of zoom in on Army Group North and see if there's anything else we need to do. Oh, I did learn something, uh, or something became more apparent to me. Hello, Stanley! Yes, your sports are over today. Uh, did Liverpool play today? I don't know. I've kind of checked out on football a little bit. I just can't watch the damn game without a crowd in the stands. I don't, you know, I don't know why. Um, Jasic says, what about Lake Peepus from the north? Uh, okay, well, let's go up there and look. Uh, that's, yeah, so Lake Peepus, we're going to take 18th Army up here this way now this is not good terrain uh, but it'll be an all infantry assault and the real challenge is getting across this river here uh, you're attacking in some cases into heavy woods into marsh uh, but usually you push across here it's not the end of the world but you have kind of two rivers here you have a bigger river the narva uh, and then you have a smaller one back here so you 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 know, you got to push across this river. Now, 18th eventually will do that. It's just kind of how long it takes you uh, is the real question. Okay, uh, one other thing about strategy. Um, as the Axis player, as it was historically, you've got to try to stay on the initiative. And what do I mean by that? What's your big advantage here at the start? Well, you've taken the Soviets by a surprise attack. All right. They're in complete disarray. You have to keep pushing forward, taking advantage of that. The more you sit and wait and wait for the perfect circumstances, you're playing into their hands. Because if you're playing the Soviets, uh, which I've done a few times, uh, and we will do on the channel in this game as well eventually, when you're playing the Soviets, your first... Uh, strategy or the first thing that you do is try to get everything out of these theaters that you can. Try to get as much retreated back and allow them to rebuild, build up a little bit, and then you try to then organize. Well, that becomes very difficult if the Germans and the Axis continue to push, 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 because you're constantly reacting. All right. But if you give the Soviets time to set up <clears throat> then you're in big trouble. So always try to keep the initiative as the axis. And what that really means is continually moving forward. Even if you're outrunning your supply and fuel, in the case of the Panzers, in some sense, that's okay. You've, you've, you know, it, it's two choices that aren't ideal, but the better choice is to always move forward and worry about the supply and fuel later. Uh, it, rather than sitting here. So the reason this comes up is, you know, we've got the Panzers way out here, the Panzer group, right? Uh, the fuel and supply situation is not going to be good as they continue to move forward. So we could sit here and say, okay, we're going to let everything catch up to us and we'll wait and then we'll be at full strength and we'll have all our combat prep points and blah, 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 blah. 
in my mind, or at least the way I play, and I think it's the proper way to play, having played it both ways, is to continue moving forward anyway. Try to take as much territory and keep the Soviets as off balance as you can. And if you get to turn three next turn and you don't have enough fuel to move very far, worry about that then. All right. Uh, so really keep moving forward and always protect your supply lines. So if I had to tell a new Axis player, um, the you know the two big rules: keep moving forward early in the game. I always say always attack the first ten turns. So the first ten turns, you just attack anything you find, whether it seems like you've got good odds or not, and continue moving forward. And always protect those supply lines, the railways behind you. Uh, those are the two big important things. Stanley, well, yes, uh, there was a documentary scheduled for today. Uh, the shooting of that documentary has uh, been pushed back a little bit. So I do get to get a live stream in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just go for it. we got to get these turns uh, happening. All right. So uh, 18th Army, there's no other moves available. We've got everybody in command as we want. Uh, there's no commands that we have to you know, fix or do something else with. I was going to mention something, and I don't understand this as well as I should really yet, um, and that is garrison. So we had talked last time about garrisons and how they work in this game, uh, and it was unclear, right? I mean, it's not like the old game where you have to put, oh, I came all the way back here in this theater box. Let's get back to Army Group North. In the old game, uh, taking Riga, for instance, you would have to go put a security unit here to quote-unquote garrison Riga. And that would keep partisans, or at least reduce the chance of partisans spawning. That no longer applies in this game. There is no garrison in individual cities or towns, but or well, I guess it was cities or urban areas in the old game. Now there's something called the garrison theater box and I'm still grappling with exactly how you meet the requirements of that but my uh, supposition and just kind of what I've read so far is we're gonna have to move our security units into that garrison box eventually now we've turned garrisoning over really or I'm sorry we've turned the theater boxes over to the AI and I'm not exactly sure how those two things mesh together you know will the AI take our our security units and put them in the garrison th theater box We'll find out. We need to find out soon. I will find out before this turn is over because obviously that's a very important concept. Okay, so 18th Army's moved. We've moved our rail, and now we've got to go about moving our panzers. Oh, at the end of last episode, I was really struggling with figuring out how big a uh, depot was. It's not that hard. I made it look a little harder than it was. You've got to be on the logistics button up here, all right, so that you see the depots, and then you just hover over it. And if we look below it, you can see logistics freight, received, stored, sent out, lost capacity. And that's what I had found one time, and then I tried to go back because we were doing a thought experiment. Now, these depots will gain in capacity uh, when you have a headquarters unit sitting right on top of them, all right? That is capped at one headquarters unit. So moving a second headquarters unit onto that depot does not further increase the capacity. It's one. Uh, so if you have a headquarters unit sitting on a depot, it will increase its capacity, but the second one does not add to that capacity. Okay, so that... Uh, you know, answers that question, and the way you find out is you get on the logistics uh, map mode there, and you just, you know, hover over this, and it will tell you uh, all of your logistics information from this depot. Now, I sort of wish, and maybe I can, I'll put in a, a word to the developers that, you know, I guess it would be easiest if you could click on the depot symbol up here. But even if you click on Riga, it would be nice if it gave you all of the information about the depot here. Uh, it does allow you to disband it or reset its priority. That's great. Maybe right underneath here, if it told you all the depot information, I think maybe that would be a little easier. Um, 
Hey, Tiago, how's it going? Uh, Jacek, will you continue campaign in War in the East 1, or have I abandoned it totally? I have not abandoned it totally. Uh, we will get back to that at some point, To uh, For one thing, you know, War in the East 1 isn't going anywhere. I think most people are going to end up playing this game, but you will have a lot of people that still want to play War in the East 1. It's an absolute classic, right? And I think that this will supplant it as that classic, uh, but... Well, I say supplant. I think it will move alongside it as another classic. Uh, kind of like how people still go back and play Civilization 4 and think, hey, that's the best Civilization. You will certainly have people that say War in the East was the apex you know, of the War in the East games. And so I will go back. Um, <laughs> Stanley, I will take Poltava. If you want Poltava taken, we'll make it a prime objective here. Uh so yes, Jacek, I will go back and play that at the, at some point. Of course, right now, everybody's interested how you play this game. Uh, but we will, you know, there's always lulls kind of between big new games coming out. I think the next big one that's coming out that I'll be playing is probably Humankind, which is a little bit different than anything we've played on the channel before. Uh, Humankind is kind of a civilization game type game that bills itself as Civilization Plus. You know, there's a lot more going on. Uh, it's from some of the original developers of Civilization 4, as a matter of fact. Uh, and so I'm working on that now to maybe get some exclusive time with that game. Well, I say exclusive. Other people have already played it. It comes out in about a month or so. Uh, so we'll probably play that. Uh, I will be playing Distant Worlds 2. Distant Worlds, the original, is one of my favorite games ever. I think it's maybe the best 4X game ever made. And so I cannot wait for Distant Worlds 2. The reason I bring all of that up is in between those things, there's going to be some... Uh, lulls where there's not a you know brand new hot game out uh, for what kind of games we like and during those times I will go back uh, there's other things that I have to do is uh, you know uh, Field of Glory 2 Medieval I still have part 4 to make of that tutorial and so if you've been waiting for that I will get back to that uh, I will get back to all of these things uh, for the most part uh, Imperator Rome I maybe have kind of left that behind a little bit uh, we may at some point go play a campaign in that, but, uh, you know, we played through the tutorial and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, when there is a new Paradox game, generally I will be playing it, or a huge new update. We may play Stellaris on the channel, uh, for instance. Uh, okay, anyway, let's get to the game. So we figured that out. Let's take logistics off now so we can see a little better what we're doing. Let's click right up here. We have six Panther, Panzer Division. We also have 36 motorized. We have the motorized core, which is 41st motorized core, or XXXXI motorized core. No, 41st motorized core. Uh, I always use my motorized first or move them out first. I use them to chew territory and to actually do the fighting for the Panzers generally speaking. Uh, and so let's go ahead and start moving the motorized up here. I start back to front as usual. Uh, there's actually no reason for me to be following this rail line, except I like to do that as people know. Uh, let's go up here and see what we've got. Okay, so they have retreated back here. Now this is kind of new to this game as far as what the AI is doing. Usually these units you find I say usually. In the old game, you would find them like around this area, and they kind of come back this way. So I like this. So the AI uh, has changed a little bit. It's going to be a little more of a challenge. Um, we'll leave him there for now, and we're going to go look for other another motorized unit. Now, it looks like this headquarters has three divisions underneath Reinhardt. Okay, so Reinhardt's a 777 a seven mech. Uh, Reinhardt is an excellent uh, mech general. And so we're going to bring them up here, his core, and then von Monstein is down here and we'll bring his core kind of up this rail line. Uh, and we'll try to avoid this. We're going to we're gonna work on this with the infantry, uh, probably 16th when it gets up here. For now, if there are any Soviet units here, we'll try to 
uh, encircle and entrap them. If there's not, we're going to, you know, build a path to Peskov. Um, I don't want to move these Panzer divisions just yet. So let's get to moving. And this is movement fog of war. Uh, we talked about in the basic tutorial, what the heck is movement fog of war? Because it's kind of a new concept that only these Grigsby games have. You don't see it in a lot of other war games. But what it is, is it's not going to show you how many movement points it takes to get here. Uh, we don't know what's out here. We need to figure that out by recon. So you really got to go hex by hex here. Um... This guy, okay, well, there you go. We had something pop up. Now, unlike John Tiller games, if you've ever played Tiller games, uh, th they did not get an opportunity fire against us just because we didn't know that they were there. In a John Tiller game, they would have gotten to fire or kind of defensive fire at us because they surprised us. Uh, but in these Grigsby games, that's not the case. Um, okay, let's do a hasty attack against them and see what happens. Okay, we knocked them back. They lost 44 tanks. And this is why I like to move my motorized units out. You don't want to be losing tanks on speculative attacks like that. Uh, and so I have the motorized divisions go first. And we'll hit him again. Okay, that time they held. Now that's interesting. So the first time we got like 77 to nothing odds. Uh, this time we did not. It does not matter that he's out of command here, really. Um, we are going to move on Monstein up though um okay there we go now we're getting him to retreat out we need to get this unit moved so we can get the panzer division down here through and so we'll take this kind of central rail hub and hit this unit again just keeps retreating back that's fine now then i could move up here and keep moving this way but i think really that invites a counterattack or something here getting around behind so i'm just going to kind of follow him and keep hitting him okay well we got we got to kind of got nothing left uh all right then now we've got this motorized unit and this motorized unit we could either take up this way or we could go and see what we've got over here um, now, we've got a Panzer Division back here that we could also take up this way. I think I'll move this Panzer Division up this way. I want it to be the furthest north. Um, and we'll just keep kind of searching here, looking around for Soviet forces. Now, I do have these Panzer Divisions back here, so I can be a little bit more adventurous with this because I can always move a panzer division over here around behind him uh, just to protect him. Um, we've got this whole road network here. We also have a rail network that I wouldn't... But see, it stops right there. The rail network does not go on. It's just roads. All right. I'm going to leave him there for now. We'll save some uh, movement points just to see. And we're going to bring this motorized division sort of this way and see if we can find anything out here. Not really. Not really. Um, and next turn, we'll get the infantry across the river here. And so what kind of happens back here is not the biggest deal in the world. I, I will move him here. Okay. There was just nothing up there. So now we're going to move him north. Uh, we'll actually come here. We'll attack him. We've now routed him out. And we'll move right up here and see what we're facing. Okay, it's just a fortified unit, so no biggie there. Um, let's get von Monstein moved up here a little ways. We'll just put him in this town. All right. This railway, of course, will eventually... We're going to take these hexes next turn, but we need to take them because this railway is going to be a way of supply to uh, the units to the east here of the crossing. And so we'll need to deal with that at some point. Um, okay, 
That all looks good to me. So Von Monstein's up here. Now we could take the Panzers a little further, but with this new combat uh, prep points, uh, I'm tempted to just leave him here. Now in the past, I would have just probably moved this, continued moving this up. But for now, I think I'll keep these kind of closer together, bunched. We'll save some of the movement points there, save some of his fuel, and allow him to have more CPP when we get up here where we may have to fight across something. Now, I would rather not do that with the Panzer Division. I'd rather do it with the Motorized Divisions, but we'll see when we get up there. All right, so we have this Motorized Division up here. He could attack and see what's about. Uh, let's... Oh... Okay, so we got a real, real defensive force there. Um, a 24 on the defense. All right, uh, now you may have seen, if you're new to these games, you may have seen that we only scouted there and we took very few losses. When you have a good general, if they pass a check, if they go, if you order them into a battle and they don't like the odds and they're like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 that's a 22. We, we can't deal with that. They will do what's called uh, scouting. And so they'll just, you know, kind of make first contact, say, whoa, that's a lot bigger armored unit than we were expecting. And you'll take fewer losses. That all has to do with how good your command is. And that's one of the great advantages of the Germans. They obviously have really good generals. And so Reinhardt's a good general. And he decided to pull us back. Um... We may not attack them this time. We may, uh, when I say attack them, these uh, units right up here, we may kind of leave those. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a substantial force. You can see one of their air commands is here. So it's in full retreat. Uh, I'm not exactly sure in this game what happens when you attack an air command. My, so I suspect it's like the old game where they just, they, you know, go flying kind of like they've routed uh, and they'll regroup, regroup further back. Uh, but I'm not sure yet. Rocka Soccer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did not think I was going to be live this morning. Uh, and so misinformation. Facebook's going to take me down for misinformation. No, uh, I didn't think I was going to be live today. It just worked out that I could. Uh, there was a change in schedule. Um Spiral Megatron, does it count as a loss for their general? Well, that's a good question. Uh, let's go look at Reinhardt. Can we see it from his, his... Oh, it's got one win and zero losses. So it does not count as a loss uh, when they scout, which I think is fair because it's good generalmanship, right? Um, let's get Reinhardt up here close to his guys. Uh, but yet leave him back a little bit so he can maybe pull off the depot at Riga after this turn. Uh, I'm not sure when exactly this will turn into a fully functioning depot. Uh, I'm just not sure. Uh, and now we could move the Panzer... Divi oh, a thought experiment. Okay, so let's move him out. Now let's go to logistics and let's see what the capacity is. The capacity is 60,000 again. Okay. Um, and then it said 17,200. But let's go put the headquarters in here. And now it says 37,200 in brackets there. So the ideal capacity of this depot is 60,000. Okay, that's what it would be. But evidently it's been damaged. Either that or it's because we're just taking it over and there's a little bit of a buildup effect, right? So now it's saying capacity is 37,200 when I move the headquarters in there. We'll talk more about all that. Um, and I, I'm really reading through it now to get it right for the tutorial. Uh, but obviously you can just see the number in brackets there is definitely increased when we moved the headquarters into the area where there is the depot. And so, you know, that's just, it's a learning experience for us all. But, uh, you know, as we go on, we'll get it figured out. Exactly. I mean, I, I want to keep all these headquarters where there are depots because it obviously affects them. And I know that just from reading through the logistics section once is that it does give them a benefit 
but only one headquarters. So it doesn't do you any good to stack three headquarters there, for instance. Um, I think this all looks good. I mean, the only other thing I could do is maybe... Let's attack here. Wow, shit. Uh, well, I lost nine tanks doing that. That probably wasn't my best idea ever. Uh, that's all right. They'll be replaced. We're early in the war. First 10 turns, you're attacking, right? That's what I said. Well, uh, you don't really want to do speculative attacks with your Panzer divisions. Uh, but we've done that now, uh, and they will be replaced eventually. That actually reminds me. So I think we're pretty much done with the north, and we'll go get into the center. That does remind me that I want to go put... Okay. Uh, we're going to go back and mess with supply priorities, but we'll probably do that at the end of the turn. I want to put all of these Panzer divisions in 3rd Panzer into refit so that they get first dibs on replacements and upgrades. So we'll put all of Panzer Group 3 into refit. Uh, why is that? Well, they take the real brunt of the action early on. Uh, and so we're going to have them get priority. I may do it with some of Panzer Group 2, or I may take uh, Panzer Group 3 out of it here at some point, and we'll put uh, Panzer Group 2 into refit. So what is refit? Refit just says, it's kind of, you know, think of it sort of like supply priority, but it is for upgrades and replacements. It just puts them at the front of the line for upgrades and replacements. Um, yeah, we've got it all on supply priority four, which is good. Uh, just want to make sure I got these all on refit. Okay, not him. There we go. Refit, 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 refit. All right. That all looks good. We got them all on refit, and we've got them all on supply priority four. That's how I want it to be. Um, hey, does the game look better today? I went ahead and upped the uh, resolution. Uh, I said, screw it. You know, if it goes down, I'll we'll be right back. Uh, but really, a game like this, I would much prefer to play in 1080. Uh, and so, just let me know if it if you know, can you tell a difference in sharpness? Is YouTube allowing you to bring this at a full HD level? I know that if there has been a complaint, you know, people say 720p is not good enough uh, for this kind of game where you got to read small print. And I do understand that. Uh, but, you know, between those two not ideal choices, I would rather the stream stay up. And so I have been doing it on 720p. Uh, of course, the tutorials are in 1080 because I use a different program to make the tutorials when I'm not here and you don't have to see my smiling face. Uh, so those are always in HD uh, or 1080p. All right. So let's take one more look at the north. Uh, you know, if you watch the channel long enough, you know that I'm OCD and I've got to go back here and make sure everything is as it should be. Uh, I've got headquarters in the main depots at the border. All right. I know enough to know I should be doing that. Hey, well, this is why I look. We've got an infantry division back here that I haven't moved. What's wrong with me? Um, huh. All right, so it's he's with this core. Let's get him across that river and up this way. All right, great. Hey, I love when I find just a hidden infantry division. I don't think that that happened historically. You know, it's like Gunther. Did you uh, check on 86th ID? And he's like, 86th ID. I don't know. They look at a map and they're they're back here, just kind of hanging out by the border. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, hopefully high command will not uh, take punitive action against me for that. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Stanley. Uh, it's looking good so far. <laughs> Early War in the Pacific uh, looks like it's from a different generation. Uh, <laughs> those early Let's Plays. I would agree with that, Stanley. Uh, 
Thanks, Stanley, for that. You always keep me honest. Uh, don't let me get a big head, Stanley. Uh, <laughs> that's funny stuff. All right. Uh, I guess OKH, we could actually move into a depot area as well. Now, we have the security headquarters here. Where's a good place to put them for a depot? Uh, I mean, I guess we could put them here. Eventually, we could put them up here to juice the depot. I don't know. Let's put them up here. There's no reason they can't be there. Well, that didn't do anything to my capacity. Uh, let's take the roads off here really fast. Uh, okay, there's the rail lines. This is off two major, you know, this is off a double rail. Uh, okay, I'm just going to leave him there. It doesn't really matter. Hopefully, Luflata 1, since we have it on flexible now, moves up. We really got to get the Air Force moving up. And I know I've turned that over to the AI to some degree. Uh, but... <laughs> Stanley, it does look like Commodore 64 graphics, those early War in the Pacific Let's Plays. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, my, my you know, kind of, uh, I guess, branding all of that, the Strategy Gaming Dojo and whatnot, it's all, I did it on purpose, obviously. Well, I say I did it. My wife did it. Uh, did all of my graphics and everything, like pixels, you know, uh, even the fonts and whatnot. And she's actually the guy that made that little ninja uh, with just doing little blo little pixel blocks. And so I'm just trying to keep with the branding of the channel, Stanley. We I may take this down to 360p and see how you like that. I think that's what those early War in the Pacifics were. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I actually need to clean out. Oh, man, I should have done it with this unit. Um, hmm. Well, I guess next turn, I can move one of these security units here and clear out these two hexes. The reason is they're right next to rail. I don't like that. Um, hmm, I don't want to waste one of these guys doing it. Uh, I don't want to waste the movement points. All right, let's move into the center, and uh, we'll do the center now. Uh, let's just start with 9th Army, 6th Corps. And can he get up here and do an attack? Not really. Let's take the furthest north one here. Come up here, and we'll just have... Whoa, hey, hello. Uh, okay, he surrendered. That's like 5,000 men. All right. Uh, what do we have here? Well, let's, let's attack. We'll see. Hey, he surrendered too. Uh, these units are isolated out here, right? Uh, if we back up, this was part of our big overall pocket. And so, you know, whatever their combat value was before, or whatever the heck they had in here, they were isolated and therefore much, much more likely to surrender and be at a lower uh, combat value. So, all right. Hey, Andre, how's it going? Welcome. Welcome. You're a new name to me. Hi to you. Thanks for dropping by. We've got a good crew here. Uh, lots of historical knowledge, game knowledge. You can learn a lot just by watching the chat or looking at the comments below the videos. Uh, there's a lot of people that know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, whether it be with respect to World War II in general, the Eastern Front, or the game. So it's always fun here. Um, all right, so we're still moving six core. Let's we're gonna have six core be to the north here now. All right, that works. We'll space bar him. Get these guys all moving up this way. I guess that's the only two divisions underneath 6th Corps. So we'll bring the headquarters up here. Uh, I guess we're going to build a depot at Vilnius, or the game will. I'm still letting the game do the depots, but uh, that would seem to make a lot of sense to me. I think for now, 9th Army Headquarters, we should put it on the depot. Yeah, look at that. The capacity just jumped. That's how that works. So we'll leave him there this turn. Um... Oh, I wondered. I was like, why is it having us route this way? Uh, this is another isolated unit. It should immediately surrender. That's 5,000.
and we'll take this little town and maybe just move north of the uh, of the swamp here. So Ninth Army will be vectoring a little northeast anyway. All right, these guys are also isolated. We'll see if we can get up here and actually launch an attack against one, one of them. I'd rather get rid of them this turn, obviously, because I don't want my Panzer Division to have to deal with them, and I also don't want them to get behind my Panzer Division. But I don't think it's going to make a big deal, because even if they retreat out here, we're going to have a new supply way that comes through here, so that's probably okay. Maybe. I may use this motorized unit or this one up here to go knock them out, but I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with 3rd Panzer yet, so we'll get to that. Um, here is the Panzer or the Panzer Group headquarters. I think eventually we're going to have a depot here at Conus or one at Vilnius. So I'll probably just move him up to... Look at this route. Man, he really doesn't want to go through the swamp. Uh, we're just going to move him up there for now. Um, all right, let's keep moving Ninth Army. This guy is part of this core, and so... It's not the most efficient route, but maybe I want to kind of come through here. Eh, I've still got guys back there. Let's just uh, do it this way. Let's um, come up this way. All right, and we'll set his, their headquarters, I don't know, here. All right, so now you're starting to see kind of as the game moves along how you set these things up. You've got your divisions out front, the core headquarters, uh, anywhere from one to five hexes behind them so that they're still in command. You can do that with Shift FZ or Shift FZ. Shift Z will show you these lines. It shows in blue that they're in good command. If they're not in good command, that line will be red. It also traces an orange line back to this unit's headquarters, so the core headquarters back to the Panzer Group headquarters. Uh, very useful and helpful. Um, all right, we're going to get Ninth Army really moving here. Let's get cooking. All right, I'll have him come up here. These these units are isolated. They should surrender. 3896, and I think I'm going to keep him moving forward. So I'm just going to leave that unit for now and let some of these back here mop that up. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'll have these guys be in the center. We'll put him right on a mountaintop. Uh, that's another 4,400. And we'll just keep him moving northeast. We'll move all these guys northeast. And I'll uh, move the headquarters up here. I mean, I guess the closer he is to the rail line, the better. But if he moves, he can't move that far back here. Maybe here? Yeah, they're still all in command. That all looks good. Okay, so we've got our three core headquarters here, and we've got one more to go. Now, uh, this is a divisional game. We've talked about this in the tutorial. It's a divisional game, but you can build up and break up, or build up or break down your divisions. And so that's what you're seeing here. This is one part one of the 256th. Now they still identify them as if they're part of a division, right? This is part one of 256th. This, well, that's 162nd. All of these are broke down here. There's two of 256th. And so really they're regiments, and that's what that symbol is. Uh, if you put them all in the same hex, you can combine them back up into a division uh, but you can take any division of the game like this one we could break this down uh, into these kind of regiment and you can cover more ground that way it helps you cover the front easier um, all right hey florian how's it going okay you like the 1080p so do i and if it if it's working here great uh, I play this game in Windows mode just because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see the chat or anything. And so, you know, I think that that does have an effect on it. 
because it's scaling differently. You know, I'm in Windows mode, so it's not the full screen, which my screen is 1920 by 1080, right? But it's 1920 by 1000 uh, because I'm playing in Windows mode. So 1256, 2256. Uh, I would like to put them all together, but I'm not sure it really matters this time, he says, as he's about to put them back together. It drives me crazy. I, I hate this regimental thing, but you got to learn how to do it, uh, because when you get on the defensive, if that comes about, uh, that's the only way for the Axis to cover the lines. Um, let's go ahead and get them to surrender. That's about 9,000 men. Now, what is this group out here? It's an excellent question. They're directly attached to OKH, all right? And so they're what I like to call in this game kind of a free agent group. Uh, they aren't attached to an army. Uh, they're attached directly to the high command. They're not even attached to an army group. And so you could really put them wherever you want to and then reattach them. But we don't want to send anything over its uh, command and so here we see 18th Army is now 28 of 27. We don't want to put it in 18th, all right? Now then, where is uh, 16th Army Headquarters? It's back here somewhere. There it is, I think. Yes, it's at 16 of 27. So this unit, or, these, or this entire core, is probably going to be put in 16th, but even that puts it over its limit. So we may have to parcel out some of these, you know, regiments or divisions or parts of divisions rather than regiments into different units uh, or different armies. Uh, what is, so I put that in Vilnius, right? I put the headquarters here. That's at 20 of 27. Oh, okay. So 9th Army could take 7, maybe that's what I'll do. 9th Army could take 7, and 16th Army could take, like, 9, and so we could get them all under command. Okay, so these core headquarters, this one's only 4 of 9. Let's take this division, and what is this core? It's 6th core. Let's take this division and put it in 6th core. And this will get your command all done. Now you may say, well, what's, uh, why not just leave it attached to OKH? Well, because the way the game works is when there are checks that have to be passed, let's say in relation to this division, this uh, commander gets to do dice rolls to try to beat those checks or pass those checks. If he fails them, it then goes to 9th Army Headquarters, and they get to try to beat, you know, or, or the commander there gets to try to beat the dice rolls. Then from 9th Army, it goes to Army Group Center. Then it goes to OKH. Well, the way this is structured right now, if this division needs to pass a commander check, it goes to the core headquarters, right, just like it would here, but there's nothing else in between, and then it goes straight up to OKH. So there's a much more, it's much more likely they would fail their commander checks uh, when they're not directly attached to an army or a core headquarters. And so we're going to parcel all of these out to the best we can. And look at this guy. He can really get moving here. I like that. Uh, he's going to get all the way up here. All right, that works. We'll move him up there. Oh, there was a unit there. That's still isolated. All right, and so that's going to cut down on his. He's now 12 of 9. And are there any other divisions? Are these all broken down? No, there is a division. It's right here. It's the one we just used, actually. Uh, we'll put him maybe, what's the command here? Uh, this is 8th Corps. Whoops, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Gosh darn it, get off of that. Um, oh, I was looking at the rest of 9th Army. Let's put him in 8th Corps. All right, that works. And now we'll just move him up here a little bit to try to get with his uh, 
his guys. Now we have a bunch of uh, broken down divisions here. Uh, one 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 sixty second, one one or one two fifty sixth. All right, and you can also see this. All right, I'm going to put him on top of there. Two two fifty sixth. We'll have them meet like here. I'm going to have him go ahead and try to take this unit. They surrendered. Okay, so in this game, really so far, if something's isolated, they pretty much throw their hands up in the air. Um, which is probably pretty realistic. In the last game, I thought that maybe they didn't surrender as much as they should. I may need these guys to actually clean up some of this. I'm just going to move him up here, and we'll combine them next time. Let's see. Uh, they only retreated there, so they didn't surrender. Uh, we'll get them with somebody else. I think that's what I'm going to do with the rest of these. They're small. We'll just move them up here. Yeah, I'll put them together next time. Uh, for this time, let's get all these guys in the pocket to surrender, if we can. Uh, 77 tanks, 5,600 men. Just, you know, mind-blowing numbers. Six, five, okay. You move up here. Surrender, that's 6,500 men. So this pocket... Just very powerful. You know, they're completely just out here on their own. And in a lot of cases, we'll just surrender like this. 9,000 men, 205 tank or armored vehicles. You know, they they don't necessarily have to be tanks. Uh, fine. I'll move him there. I'll use this unit to go ahead and get them to surrender. Oh, he just retreated. Good for you, buddy. Um... Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Oh, we only scouted there. So they're still strong right here. I say strong. Stronger out here in this pocket, this middle part of the pocket here. Um, okay. We're going to use our security unit to try to get these guys to surrender. Does it help? No. Does it help? No. Did they? No, they did not surrender. Let's try that again. Okay. Well, they're really going to be isolated this next time. Uh, we'll just move this security unit back here. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to take things out with security units. Not uh, always ideal. Um, they had not a whole lot left. So again, we're just cleaning up here. I'm trying to use these smaller units so we don't have to actually use a full division's uh, movement points. Uh, I would prefer it work that way, but we may have to at some point. Because we want to take this depot here as well. I think taking that depot... Yeah, I, I want to clean all of this up this time. It's just a matter of what we're going to have to use to do it. Okay, so they surrendered. That's 4,300 men. Um, I don't know. Hell, I'm just going to keep hitting them. Maybe at some point they'll surrender. One thing I do want to do, can I clean that up? Not really. Uh, move this unit, this security unit back here. Try to hit this. Come on, man. I may have to use these units right here that are a full strength unit to take these out. I, I really want to just get rid of them, but we may have to do that. And also this cavalry unit here, uh, since it's mobile, I would like to get it up into the panzer groups. And so I'd really rather not use it this time to do this. I know this is, you know, must watch television as I use security units uh, to try to take these guys out. Uh, okay, fine. How about this unit? Or, wow, I've got one all the way back here. Can he get up here and do anything? Yeah, maybe. Let's hit the space bar, get him up there. Can he do an attack? No, too bad. Uh, all right, how about this guy? I think he can. All right, 
That's a surrender. That's 10,000. Now we'll move their headquarters. Now this is 35th Corps. They're another one of these free agent forces that just doesn't... Oh, it's locked right now. Okay. Hopefully that'll unlock next turn and that'll be fine. Uh, second Army. Oh, we haven't talked about reinforcements. We did get some reinforcements and some things that became unfixed, including the Romanians. And so we'll talk about that as we move along here. Um, surrender? Surrender? Nope. This is his headquarters. This headquarters only has this division, and evidently there's one back here. Yeah, it's still locked, though. So this is kind of a good one to clean up with because they can't really move forward anyway. Um, and we'll clean up these, these stronger units down here with this guy. All right. Hopefully. Do I still have... Can I, yeah, I can still do a deliberate attack. Perfect. Okay, so that was 18,000 men. Just unbelievable, really, when you kind of back up and think about the numbers you're talking about here. Um, okay. I don't want to use those units to clear this out, but I'm going to kind of have to, I think. Uh, I guess I could move him back here. Now, I really want this mobile SS Cavalry Brigade. Now that I'm not going to have to use it to fight partisans out on the map, I'm going to probably put it with 3rd Panzer eventually. But for the time being, let's go down here and try to clear up some of this stuff. Stop retreating. Surrendered. Okay, so that's 9,500 men. And we'll just hit this again. Now that's across the river, so not ideal. Wow, the the bards will be singing about this one Soviet unit. They could not be defeated. Okay. Um. Now then, now I gotta move this security unit up here and hit him again. And again, and again. Uh, just curious, if a port is cut off, like, say, vent spills, would it be able to supply ver via naval transport? I would say generally no. I don't know exactly the situation you're talking about, but if it's cut off, I mean, they've got to be able to get the naval transport into the port. So if it's cut off, they're not going to be able to get anything in there, if that's what you're asking. Uh, sorry if I misunderstood that, but that, if that's what you're asking, um, no. Uh, if they're cut off, basically anything cut off, whether it be a rail line or a port, uh, is not going to do any supply. All right, I didn't really want to have to do this, but I'm going to take this motorized unit and just get rid of him, finally. Uh, so that was 8,500 men. Now, this motorized unit, um, the 90th layer is connected to these guys. Even though it's motorized, he's connected to this infantry. We're not going to keep it that way. We're going to take him up here well let's start right there we're going to put him in third panzer uh, i like to keep all of my motorized units together uh, but before we do that let's go ahead and make them surrender that's three thousand all right and so let's look at our headquarters not third panzer group headquarters let's look at these headquarters uh, he's 7 of 12. You get more command points now for these panzer groups, uh, or panzer corps, and that's great. Uh, that was always, I always wanted that. Um, who should I put him with? Who's got the most motorized? I like to keep all my motorized together, really. Uh, fine. Let's put him with 57th. Uh, that, that looks good. Although 57 is really going to be moving. Maybe I should put him back here with these guys. Uh, this is 39th. All right, I'll put him in 39th. Hold on. Wait a second. 39th has got all Panzer divisions right now. I like to keep my motorized together. So let's do that. 
Sorry, I just want to make sure I get this the way I want it. Uh, 57th, then, will be his core. 57th motorized core. So I generally, these motorized units, I like to keep them all in their own cores and keep all of the Panzer divisions in their own cores. The reason I do that is I use them differently. I use the motorized to fight. So if we need to get across a river with our Panzers, I move the motorized units up because you're not, you're not using as much, what's the best way of putting this, uh, of your scarce equipment. What's scarce out here? Well, it's actually the Panzers, like your Panzer IVs, uh, your Panzer threes. Those are what are scarce. And I don't mean this to sound callous, but your men and, tr you know, armored cars are not precious. You know, if you lose some armored cars, no big deal. Uh, again, these are pixel men, so take it that way. Losing some Pioneer squads isn't the end of the world. Those will be replaced. If you lose Panzer IVs, that's a lot more difficult. So I fight with my motorized divisions and follow along behind with my Panzer divisions to then jump forward and do the actual encirclement. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Uh, okay. We're not going to move the Panzers yet. We've still got a lot to move down here. Um, like I said, I really would like to get rid of these without using full divisions. It just seems like a real waste to do that. And so I'm trying to do that the best I can. Uh, I know that, you know, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but all right, they surrendered. So if I can get security units to do that, and also I think I need to set down like this headquarters unit in some place where I want to jump the depot, you know, make the depot have more capacity. Even if it's a security headquarters, I think that would work. Uh, they're in the rule book. I didn't see any differentiation. You can tell me if I'm wrong about that. Um, I don't like having this Soviet hex here. Can I get into it though? Ah, crap. I guess not. Can he get down here? No. All right, let's just move him forward a little bit. I really don't want to have to move anything backwards. Uh, I wish I would have just taken that. Where are we going to want Army Group Center? We've got it in Warsaw now. I guess that works. We'll keep that in Warsaw. Uh, we've got uh, con construction units coming out here starting to do the secondary rail. We've got 4th Army set up here. I think I'm going to have to go ahead and use these divisions back here, which in the old game, that would have been normal You because these guys were a lot tougher nuts to crack, at least on the first go around. Um, so if this part of fourth army falls a little bit behind, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's just try to get all these guys to surrender. Okay. So that was 10,000 men. We'll move across the river. Actually, no, I did not want to do that, actually. I wanted to go there. Uh, shoot. All right. Well, I'm going to have to move him. God, that's a lot of movement points. No wonder he can't get up there. Hit him again. Come on, get him to surrender. This is the one unit of cleanup I've got to do now. I mean, these guys will just knock right out. We'll start to move forth. The, the advance elements of 4th Army back here. Gosh, darn it. Come on, man! Come on! What's a general to do? A general's dilemma. All right, this guy didn't want to do this, but this is what we're going to do. There we go. That should do it. Ah! No! No! I, I laugh like maniacally like uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Joker. Uh, <laughs> oh, ah! uh, I am playing as the Russians for some reason. The AI hasn't kicked me out of Venspil's area yet. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if it's wide open or if it's... There's a, something in this game called Naval Interdiction, if you look at the air war. So you have to worry about that. Um, but if the AI isn't running Naval Interdiction in that area, and you can see it on the map, there's a Naval Interdiction button up there. Uh, 
and the port's open. I mean, if you control the port, you should be able to get supply in there. So, yeah. Oh, gents. It's the kind of things that give you gray hairs. No, it wasn't that. Uh, okay. So they surrendered. We've got this one unit back here. Now, I wanted as much of this rail to repair as possible, and so this is really annoying. Uh, can I get anything else up here to attack him? Uh, I guess I could move this unit. I don't want to do that. Uh, I guess we're just going to leave him be. for. Oh, you know what I could do? Actually, can I move one of these units down here? Maybe that's what we do. I wanted to put all these together, though. 2 second. Goodness gracious, this is like three divisions. This is going to be like a Jenga match trying to get all this put together. Um, all right, let's put that one up there. So now we've got... Oh, God, I totally did that wrong. Um, right, that's 3 one oh second. One one oh second. Okay. I'm going to bring one one oh second down here and finally try to get this thing to surrender. I want to be able to repair that roy. Right. Okay. Uh, moving on mentally. Uh, 102nd. Anything else in the 102nd here? I think it's this guy and this guy right here. The 3102nd. All right, we're going to leave this guy behind a little bit. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start moving the 102nd up here and get it into either 16th Army or 9th Army. Uh, looks like he can go all the way up here. Now he's got that guy back there that's going to have to catch up, which is a real pain in the butt. Uh, so there's 3102nd. There is two 102nd, so we'll stack them together, and when we get one 102nd up here, we'll make it into a fully functioning division. Um, Fourth Army is going to take all of this, so I'm not worried about that. Maybe I should be. I, I said that very confidently after what's happened right with this unit here, this armored division. As I said, the, the Soviets still talk about this armored division. All right, let's get them to surrender. That's 3327. All right, he's at five of five. Let's move the headquarters up one. Uh, right. Why is this security unit attached to this? Oh, that's the security division. Got it. Oh, we got to move these guys out of the security. Oh, he's in 7th Corps. Why is it showing that then? Hmm. See how it's showing it connecting to that security division? Am I crazy in seeing that? It shouldn't be. Yeah, they're connected to 7th Corps. Uh, I don't want that. They're all connected to 7th Corps. Okay, well, next turn, we'll put these together and put them in the security division. I'm not going to worry about it right now. They should be in 102nd. Uh, oh, crap. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So let's change their command to 102nd uh, RHG command, which is the security divisions. I'm not sure why they start off attached to 7th. Um, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but that's okay. Not everything has to make sense to me. Wow, there's a big train going by. I don't know if you could hear that. Uh, okay, now they're, now the security units are where they should be attached. This core... This all looks good. I'll actually move him even one more forward. We'll let them clean this up next time, and they're just going to have to kind of come along behind. Um, do I have any infantry there? I do. Okay. So let's start clearing out a lot of the Soviet hex stuff. We'll kind of go up here and maybe this way. Um, 
it's not as important that you be moving directly forward, you know, with your armies back here. Uh, they're a little bit more mop up. Now we do want to get them to the Dnieper somewhat as fast as we can, but it's more important that you clear all this stuff up really. Hey, there's a unit. And yeah, only retreated. All right, this is all just getting things to surrender. 6,500. That's surrendered. 195 armored vehicles, 10,000 men. Not bad. Not bad for a day's work. All right, they're all in command. These are all in command. Uh, we'll move the army headquarters into Brest because we do have a depot there. So that gives the depot a juice. Uh, we've still got to move the railroad. We'll do that in just one second. Oh, we still have second Panzer infantry stuff back here, but we're going to move all of fourth army first. Uh, sure. Let's put him there. Space bar, get him up there. Uh, we'll hit that unit. They surrendered. That's 4,800. We'll just double stack these guys for now. Okay, everything's in command. That all looks good. Uh, we'll have them clean up these hexes. I just want to get it away from the rail a little bit, make sure we don't have any problems moving the rail. Here's our railroad unit. He could not uh, do anything in this hex, so he's going to move forward, and he'll RRC1 that hex, and he'll RRC1 that hex. Let's get the rail moving out. Choo-choo! Uh, RRC that. Can he move there? Yeah, he can. All right. So we got our rail moving nicely. And that's that nice double wide. You know, <laughs> if you're an American, uh, there's, you know, double wide trailers. Uh, it's that nice double wide rail. Oh, uh, Thagen, what's going on? No, the tutorial videos mentioned in the rule book do not exist. Uh, and the answer to that is, is they were going to do them. Uh, and so then they decided that there were going to be enough good YouTube videos. So I guess the pressure is on for me to put up uh, the rest of my basic tutorial videos. Uh, but the company itself decided not to do those. At some point, I would actually like to just get on Slither and Sight or on, on the Slytherin Tea Time, or whatever the hell they call it, and uh, just do tutorials on there. I don't know why they don't let me. I mean, you know, believe me, it's it's not like I'm making money off of these. Not really. I mean, if you knew how little you make off of YouTube, you'd be shocked. <laughs> it really, you know, so I mean, it's not for the money. It, it really is to teach people how to play the games. And uh, so... I don't know. At some point, I have a feeling that Slytherin may ask me to do that. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they, those do not ex exist. I've got the first two parts of the tutorials up. And listen, I know if you are an experienced War in the East player, you may say, well, gosh, these are really basic right now. And they are. We go through the options. We go through every button on the screen. Um, and, but that's really because I want more people to play these games. They're great games, and people think they're too complicated. So I really start at the, at the ground floor, and we build up from there. Eventually, when we get to the air war and logistics and stuff, we'll get into really more advanced things. Um, but that's just the way I like to do the tutorials. It's how I learn. I always stay, say that at the start of tutorials. I feel like, you know, if the normal person's learning is kind of like this, you know, moves like this, I always feel like mine's more like, you know, boop, 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 bump, 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 and then like this. Once I can get my arms around everything. And so that's how I like to teach those, uh, is really starting at 
the real basics, you know, and for somebody that's never played a Grigsby game or a war or war in the East one, I really want them to feel like it's an approachable game because once you do get your arms around it, I actually think all of the systems make a lot of sense. Uh, so that was a long answer to your very short question of, do the tutorials mentioned in the re rule book exist? No, they do not. Um, you could watch the ones for War in the West because there are enough similar game, or game mechanics that they could be helpful to you. And so if you want kind of their official um, videos, you know, or somebody that was a developer or understands the game on that level, uh, they do have those tutorials for War in the West. And like I said, there's enough similar game mechanics that I, I think those can be helpful to you, uh, especially when it comes to the Air War. Uh, but hey, just hang on here to the dojo. We'll get the uh, air ones up. Uh, I think my first air one will be coming up. I'm going to try to get two of them up today if I can, uh, but we'll see. All right, let's keep moving forth, Army. Let's move this guy. Oh, they just vanished. Uh, all right. Oh, crap. Man, he used a lot of movement points getting into that hex. Holy, holy moly. Um, oh, hell, I don't know. I kind of wish I wouldn't have done that now. Let's move this guy up this way. Ah, there is a Soviet unit. I thought there must be one, the way they were representing that. Um, okay. So their core headquarters is back here. We'll just stick him right on the rail there, because you know I like him to be on the rail. Does that put him out? Nope. Nope, he's 5 of 5. That all looks good. Ninth Corps and 8th Corps are back here. They're double stacked. That's fine. 4th uh, Army and then this Corps is here. That's fine. We've got this Corps. Everybody's on side there. We've moved the railroad unit. Uh, that all looks good. Good. Now let's go back here to the back side of the map. Um, where do our... There they are. I knew we got replacements this time. Um, now the way this game works, I believe we can actually move these by rail. Uh, now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, in War in the East 1, they had done a patch that you kind of had an overall rail cap and if you used your rail to move troops, it lessened the rail cap for supplies, uh, for fuel to move by rail. Kind of a big general overall thing. So you could be moving troops through Germany and way out on the Eastern Front, that would affect how much supply they could possibly get. And I was like, you know, because it was more, rail was considered this big, all-encompassing thing. You had so much rail to use. With the way the game works now, my understanding is, every single rail line has its own capacity. Okay, and so if we use the rail line back here, it doesn't affect what we're doing in the east. That is a very welcome change. All right, so let's go up to rail movement. And what the heck are these things? We got 98th Infantry Division, 96th and 93rd. Okay, um, where do we want them? Do we want them to be in the north, the center, or the south? I kind of feel like 6th Army is really under strength right now. Um, I'm going to send one of these divisions down here to 6th Army. Am I even right about that? Let's click on this. Um, where's 6th Army headquarters? The overall headquarters. It's got to be up here, right? guess we could find out this way. No, no, no. There it is. I, I clicked on it. Uh, he's 24 or 27. Gosh, he feels really under strength to me. Uh, okay. So we're going to take one division at least. Let's just pick 98th. I don't, you know, I don't think it really matters. And we're going to move them up here um, with 6th Army. Actually, we'll move it. Yeah, I guess he needs a little more help here in the north. Let's just uh, space bar that. Okay, he's here now. Can he get off the train? 
No, you need a hundred. Whoa, a hundred strategic movement points. These are your strategic movement points. You have two hundred. Uh, we used uh, approximately a hundred. Approximately 146. Nope, exactly 146. Uh, so we're going to move that one division there. What about 17th Army? Uh, whoa, whoa, I got far afield there. Uh, 17th Army, I thought, yeah, he's over. Um, some of that needs to go into 6th maybe as well. Okay. Um, we know we're under strength in 16th and 9th Army. Okay, so let's move... The other two, these other two, whoa, that's not what I wanted. OKL, okay, wow, look at all that. Let's move these other two kind of up here to the northeast. If you also ever want to see how far your rail goes, <laughs> how much it's been repaired, and, and what's working and what isn't, go to rail move mode, and you can see very clearly how much of your rail is available. Um... Let's just move them here, and then we'll figure out what to do with them. Oh, it was only 96. Okay, I thought I had them both clicked. Let's move this then up to here. I don't, you know, we'll figure out what to do with them. But we're going to do that next time. How's that for a teaser? You're like, man, figuring out what's going on with 98th Infantry Division is going to keep me up at night. So I will try to put up another live stream later today. Uh, I also will be putting up part three of the basic tutorial. Uh, I am going to go back and start working on the War in the West part two. Now, these games are very, very similar, but I do understand that, you know, I am going to make two separate ones. So if you just want to worry about War in the West, and War in the West has some things that are a little different, and Phibius headquarters make a lot more difference in the War in the West, of course. Uh, and the Air War is slightly, slightly different. They're the same systems, but they're a little bit different. Um, also airborne or yeah, airborne troops matter a lot more in the West. So anyway, I'm going to make two separate tutorials for those, but I will try to get up part three of this war in the East two tutorial, and we will stream later. Thank you to everyone who has been subscribing, liking, commenting, following. How many more words can I use? What else can you even do on these platforms? supporting the gen the channel in general i would like to just say thank you very much uh it's just growing at a incredible rate uh and so i hope that's because you're enjoying the channel and you're learning quite a bit i as i always say i learned something every one of these episodes from you guys and the chat is great got a great group here and so the more and more that continues to build out the better it is for all of us so Thank you so much. Uh, I will talk to you soon. It won't be too long. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one, guys.